today on All Things 80s, we've got the cassette Decepticons. <laughs> Welcome back to All Things 80s, and if you've been watching my recent videos, you will see that I am assembling a nice collection of G1 Transformers. And due to sort of budget limitations, I have been opting for the reissues that came exclusively from Walmart. And continuing with that, we have these cassette Decepticons. Now, I'm really only interested in Ravage and Rumble. The reason being, I can remember with absolute clarity when a friend of mine in primary six brought this two-pack into school with him. And it was the first time I'd seen Transformers in the flesh. And I was just amazed at how it could go from being a little micro cassette into a robot. And uh, he also had Soundwave, which of course tied in with these. And I just thought, this is the most amazing things. And I never got Soundwave. I never got any cassette Decepticons. But that's all been addressed and I have them now. And the reason... I have the two of these twin packs is because the deal on eBay to get Ravage and Rumble alongside Frenzy and Laserbeak was too good to pass up. And I'm thinking I may end up selling this set. Although, if I was being honest, I do prefer the colour of Frenzy to that of Rumble. But, as I mentioned, this was the set I remember my friend having. And as such, this is the one that I want to get opened and do a bit of transforming with. So without further ado, let's get a closer look at these, get this one opened up, and see what it's all about. Okay, so here we are with the Decepticon cassettes. And as always with these reissues, the packaging is just brilliant. It does take you right back to those days as a child in the 80s. Um, you know, as I've mentioned numerous times, these text specs, you can read them quite easily without the assistance of the red decoder. Now, as I mentioned in the intro there, I got the two of these as a fantastic deal on eBay, whilst I really only want this set. However, um, in terms of the, of the robots, I do prefer the look of Frenzy over that of Rumble. However, as I mentioned earlier, this was the set I remember a friend having in Primary 6, and that's the set that I want to have. Also as well, I already have Buzzsaw from the uh, Soundwave set, so I don't need another Decepticon looking like that. So we're going to put this one to the side, probably sell that one on. But this is the one that we're going to take a look at. So first things first, let's get these out of the packaging and see what they're all about. Right, so now we've got them out of the packaging, and Again, with these reissues, the first thing that strikes me is there's some good, solid weight behind these. Very, very impressive. And I did notice that both do, in fact, come with rub stickers, although it is freezing today. And I, But I did find that when I gave it a really good rub, um, it turned the emblem more of a, a red colour as opposed to the sort of rainbow color. I don't know if you can see that coming through or not, but that's the nice Decepticon logo. So anyhow, starting with Ravage. Now, this is one that I think I'm gonna keep it inside of Soundwave as a tape, um, because I'm not particularly impressed with it in Decepticon mode. It's all right, but it's not really something that displays particularly well. I'm sure there are ways of adjusting the feet to get it to stand up, but I don't see that standing up at all well. I mean, it looks pretty cool and all. And as for the additional weaponry, I guess it fits in to the side holes there. Something like that. I mean, it looks great. It's nice to have one. I was going to say have one again, actually, no, have one for the first time. But these two cassettes really just take me right back to that day in primary six. And I've mentioned this many times. It's amazing how vivid that memory is from, what, 36 or so years ago. And yet I can't remember what I had for dinner last night. So this was Ravage. Um... Not bad, as I said, I'm going to keep it in cassette form 
and display it inside Soundwave. Now for rumble. Again, good solid weight and just very, very impressive detailing on this. And again, the rub sticker right there. Um, from handling it briefly, I found that some of these other stickers are sort of prone to falling off. So we'll need to be careful with that. But in terms of getting this one into Decepticon mode, it's all pretty straightforward, really. Uh, let me see if I've got that the right way. And fortunately, it does have these metal feet, which will help it stand, because this one will be displayed in this form. And let's see, the head pops out. Yep, very nice. And get the arms turned around. I actually got that the wrong way, have I? Wait a minute, what am I doing? The feet have to go this way, of course. This is all very new to me, so it's, you know, don't be laughing at home saying, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You know, I've never had these in my hand. I've never owned these, and I haven't actually held one of these for 36 years. And I guess the additional weaponry or wings, whatever you want to call them, go on here. There we go. I think that looks great. And will it stand night? Yeah, perfectly. Pretty stable, actually. This is fantastic stuff. Really, really impressed with these. So, these are my two Decepticon cassettes that will take pride of place in my newly formed Transformers collection. So that was a nice little look there at those vintage Decepticon cassettes. And I have to say, the engineering that went into these was just brilliant for its time and very, very impressive then, but still impressive to this day. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. So thank you for watching. Special thanks to the Patreons. Please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay tuned for more videos from all things 80s.